Coral reefs are spectacular, complex living ecosystems that provide homes for more than 25% of the globe's marine species. They also provide and produce food for millions of marine animals every day. <laughs> Alrighty, Philippines, Palawan Island. Ah, oh, tropical fish, corals, heaps of stuff to see. Let's go and check it out. Most of the larger reefs are found in tropical and subtropical waters close to the equator. The Great Barrier Reef in Australia is made up of 29,000 individual reefs and it's visible from space. The Philippines is part of the Coral Triangle of Southeast Asia, hundreds of times larger than the Great Barrier Reef, with many more fish species. It is the centre of global marine diversity and also supports over 100 million people with natural resources and food every day. It also generates $6 billion within the fishing and tourism industries. Awesome. Great coral here, hard and soft corals and heaps of different types of damselfish, sarja bages. The Philippine section of the Coral Triangle is estimated at about 25,000 square kilometres supporting over 2,800 fish species, with 1,700 of them being reef associated. After the last glacial period, ice melted and the sea levels rose and flooded the continental shelves. Then coral reefs began to establish, growing upwards towards the sunlight, which makes most coral reefs less than 10,000 years old. Due to lack of sunlight, reefs can only survive from sea level to 150 metres in depth and can grow horizontally to 3 centimetres and 20 centimetres vertically per year. Other types of reefs can be formed by lifting of tectonic plates, also fringing island reefs and volcano mouth atolls. Tropical reefs are predominantly formed and held together by billions and billions of tiny coral polyps. Coral polyps are soft-bodied little filter-feeding organisms. They have tiny little tentacles, a mouth and a hard calcium carbonate cup-shaped shell which helps to protect itself when it is inactive. Basically it can retract back into the cup. The billions and billions of tiny cup-shaped polyp shells are what forms the hard reef structure, a bit like clusters of oysters growing together. There are over 2,500 species of corals from three main families, comprising of soft corals, hard corals and fan corals. They have a few different ways of reproducing, however most hard corals spawn in October and November around the full moon, releasing billions of eggs and sperm. Most corals filter feed zooplankton using feathery tentacles to filter the water through the currents. Some species have stinging cells and paralyze small prey items then move them into the mouth, just like a micro sea anemone. If you have ever brushed up against a fire coral fan, you would know about it. 
and you will probably spot them at about 15 meters away on your next dives. Coral reefs are fragile ecosystems and we need to protect them. Some of the larger threats our reefs face are global warming, coal and oil mining and export, carbon emissions that lead to ocean acidification, agricultural runoff, coastal land clearing, commercial fishing and crown of thorn starfish. In 1989, 16% of the world's reefs died through coral bleaching as a result of the water temperature rising just a little. If you want to help our reefs, Google your local ocean conservation organisation and join the program. You can also help promote conservation awareness by sharing this video on your social media pages or other conservation awareness content. Creating awareness can lead to positive change for the future. There are 600 described species of rays, or Batidia, with nine species of devil rays and two species of manta ray in the family Mobulidae, which are huge cruising, filter feeding, harmless rays that have dorsal fins and all but one, the spine tail devil ray, lack a spine or sting and are harmless to man. This is the reef manta. It can reach five meters or 16 feet across and weigh over a ton. Its cousin, the other species of manta ray, the giant oceanic manta, can reach 9 metres across and weigh 1.5 tonnes and deep dive to depths of over 300 metres. Mantas have a wide distribution around the globe in tropical and temperate waters. They are filter feeders that ram feed, passing millions of litres of water through their mouths and out their gills. At the front of their head to the sides of their mouth, you can see cephalic forward extensions of their pectoral fins that can be flared out to direct zooplankton into its mouth when feeding or rolled up into a torpedo shaped spiral when cruising. Whilst the huge mantas are cruising, the zooplankton and tiny fish are caught in the mantas' brachial plates, which are evolved gills with spongy tissue that sieve water. If you ever get the chance to swim with these graceful giants, jump on in. It's awe-inspiring and very tranquil if you relax and just go with the flow.
Mantas reach sexual maturity when they grow to three or four metres, which takes eight to ten years. The mating seasons vary in different geographic locations. After unity is achieved, the gestation period can take up to a year as the one to two baby manas are born fully developed and can be huge, over a metre in width and more than 40 kilos. Females birth pups every one to two years and it's estimated these gentle giants can live up to 50 years of age. Manta and devil rays are predated on by large sharks and killer whales. However, their biggest threat, as usual, is humans. Boat strikes, ghost nets, commercial fishing, and of course the ever-present, never-ending demand for animal body parts used in Asian medicine. Particularly China, which has caused the demise of many species and continues to do so around the world. Manta and devil rays are hunted for their gill plates, which are processed and sold as a health tonic called pengusai, which is mainly sold in Guangzhou, China. This magical potion is supposed to aid thousands of remedies from general well-being to cancer. are just cruising up and down this rocky coastline where it's all stirred up and they're still to feeding that microplankton, zooplankton and they're having a good time. Great day for a swim. I think the manta rays conservation status should be changed to endangered with a worldwide ban on wild harvesting. They are currently listed only as vulnerable with the IUCN. If you want to help manta rays, please visit projectaware.org or the mantatrust.org, or research your local organization and get on board. You can also help promote conservation awareness by sharing this video on your social media pages or other conservation awareness content. Creating awareness can lead to positive change for the future. These bait fish are hiding in here, all the hardy heads. There's a couple of thousand of them. There's just out there, there's a few barracuda cruising around, which love to eat these guys for breakfast and lunch. We'll go see if we can find one.
Anemone fish or clownfish are a beautiful species of tropical reef fish that live in symbiosis with their chosen protective fortress host anemone. There are currently 30 species described and different species live within or near their anemone protector which is armed with thousands of nematocyte stinging cells. There are dozens of different types of anemone. This is the magnificent anemone, or purple tip, or leathery sea anemone. Sea anemones are closely related to soft corals. However, they are a single animal form with a mouth, tentacles, and stinging cells. The magnificent anemone has a base that can expand to a meter. It can also retract to a closed bud similar to a flower opening and closing. In fact, this is where they get their name, anemone, which are the species of flowering plants. When they open, they spread out over the sea floor or the rock that they're attached to. They deploy all their tentacles and they basically start fishing. The sea anemone's tentacles can sting and paralyze prey items like fish, crabs and shrimp and pass them into the central mouth with their tentacles. Actually, you could envision sea anemones to be very similar to our carnivorous land plants or plants. In fact, there is actually a Venus flytrap sea anemone which also hunts its prey just like the Venus flytrap does. The magnificent sea anemone can host up to 12 different species of clownfish. They live in symbiosis, with the fish cleaning and protecting its host from parasites and also providing the anemone nutrients from the fish's excrement. Clownfish are omnivores, feeding mostly on passing zooplankton and some algae. Clownfish are all born male, and when they mature, they may turn into a female, which is the largest fish in the sea and enemy. And if she dies or is eaten by a predator, the next largest male will turn into a female. In the spawning season, the female will produce hundreds of eggs, which she will stick to a rock, inside, or as close as possible to the protection of the sea and enemy. The male fertilizes the eggs and guards them. He cleans them constantly until they hatch, generally within 7 to 10 days. The clownfish's layer of protective mucus protects it from being stung by the anemone. When the clownfish reach a juvenile stage, they may stay with the family or venture in to find another new host anemone, even join a new family or start their own in an uninhibited sea anemone. From there they will have to wait for another mate to join their anemone and start the cycle of life again. If you remove the first and two last letters of the word anemone, you end up with Nemo. I wonder if the producers of the movie knew this. Coral reefs are fragile ecosystems and we need to protect them. If you want to help our reefs, Google your local ocean conservation organisation and join the program. You can also help promote conservation awareness by sharing this video on your social media pages or other conservation awareness content. Creating awareness can lead to positive change for the future. There is only one species of rhynchodon, which is the largest fish in the ocean. Whale sharks are not air-breathing mammal cetaceans like whales and dolphins. They are actually the largest species of shark on the planet, from the order Erectolobidae, or carpet shark family. A couple of things they do have in common with whales is their huge size. 
They can reach 12 meters or 40 feet and weigh up to 20 tons, which is over 40,000 pounds. They are also harmless filter feeders, surviving for over 80 years solely off zooplankton and small fish. Whale sharks' mouths can be up to 1.5 meters wide, with 300 rows of tiny teeth and 10 filter pads. Rhynchodon's mouths are located at the front of their heads, unlike other sharks where their mouths are located below. The eyes are on the side, and just behind the eyes is the spiracle hole used to aid respiratory breathing, along with five huge gills either side, and three prominent laterally compressed ridges along its flanks. This really gives it the appearance of a prehistoric beast. Some shark species and stingrays have spherical breathing holes used to pump water through the gills, enabling them to be stationary. Unlike other pelagic mackerel sharks and manta rays, which need to maintain movement to pump water through their gills. Inside the whale shark's mouth, the filter pads act like a big sieve, allowing water to escape through thousands of one millimetre pores, then through the gills, whilst capturing prey items in the filter pads and swallowing the food as it sucks in huge amounts of water through its massive head. This can be done whilst cruising through plankton-rich water or in a stationary position. This style of filter feeding is different to baleen whales that generally filter water out through a curtain style like structure of baleen hanging down from inside of the massive top jaw which captures the zooplankton and fish. Whale sharks inhabit warmer tropical waters around the globe. They can aggregate in large numbers at certain times of the year for mating and feeding purposes. Whale sharks mature at the age of 30 and begin to mate. Not much is known with the female birthing pups, but it is believed that the female can store sperm and give birth to hundreds of pups 30 to 60 centimetres long over extended periods of time when conditions are at their optimum. Amazingly, each whale shark has its own spectacular skin pattern that looks like a million stars or one of the most amazing dot paint artworks you have ever seen. And no two shark patterns are the same. Unfortunately, whale sharks are an endangered species due to human impacts. All the usual things, ghost nets, boat strikes, hunting, illegal trade. Thankfully in the last 10 years, whale sharks have now become protected by law in the Philippines, India and Taiwan. They are also protected in many other countries around the world. Let's pray China bans its whale shark oil, skin and fin trade. If you want to help whale sharks, Google whale shark conservation. You can also help by sharing this video or other conservation awareness content on all of your social media pages. Creating awareness leads to positive change.
seven species of sea turtles remaining today. They are one of the reptilian species still remaining from the Jurassic period dating back 110 million years ago. Sea turtles eat a range of marine creatures including seaweed which makes them omnivores. From jellyfish and crabs to shrimp, sponges, algae and mollusks. From the smallest species of sea turtle, the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, measured at 30 inches, to the massive 2-3 to three metre leatherback, they are truly one of the most impressive marine reptiles that navigate the world's oceans. And the giant leatherbacks can weigh up to 900 kilos. Some species of sea turtles navigate the ocean currents up to 1400 miles between their feeding grounds and nesting sites, using the Earth's magnetic GPS and currents throughout their seasonal swimming patterns. Only female sea turtles venture on the land to lay their eggs during the warmer months from March to October, depending on the species. Some female turtles may take 25 years to mature, and they generally return to the same beaches where they hatched to lay their eggs. This may only occur every two to four years. Female turtles haul themselves onto sandy beaches and lay their eggs from 50 to 300, depending on the species. Female turtles excavate a hole using their hind flippers, 10 to 15 inches wide and up to 20 inches deep, above the high tide line. They can lay up to six clutches in a season, which they then cover over to hide the eggs from predators like monitor lizards, feral pigs, crabs, and humans. The temperature determines the sex of the offspring, with the warmer temperatures producing mainly female turtles. Incubation takes six to eight weeks, with most species eggs hatching at night to avoid predation from seabirds, pigs, and monitor lizards. Once the baby turtles hit the ocean, they're basically on their own. Only the females will return to the land in the same breeding area around 25 to 30 years later. So they take a long time to mature. Around 5% of the females will make it to sexual maturity. There are so many obstacles out there, predators that eat them, commercial fishing, ghost nets, they face an uphill battle. Sea turtles are capable of diving up to 175 metres or 500 feet with the giant leatherback able to reach a thousand metres in depth. Sea turtles spend 10 to 40 minutes diving for food, however they can sleep underwater for hours in a trance-like state, reserving oxygen stores for only their vital organs. This is the green sea turtle. They are a keystone species along with the manatee and dugong, the only few species that harvest live seagrasses, causing the paddocks to spread and provide larger areas for habitat for many other species of marine life. It's estimated that green sea turtles can live for over 80 years. However, like most of our other giant reptiles, they could probably live longer. Sea turtles are under pressure and are endangered species in many locations due to commercial fishing, ghost nets, ocean plastification and hunting. As humans we are the custodians of nature and it's up to us to look after them. 
Traditional Indigenous bag limits need to be monitored by traditional owners and elders of communities to help ensure the survival of sea turtles and dugongs, along with culture on country for future generations. As human population grows, harvesting from the wild needs to be sustainable, particularly for vulnerable or endangered species. The question is, should we really be harvesting any endangered species from the wild at all? If you would like to help support our sea turtles, please Google your local ocean conservation organisation and get on board. You can also help promote conservation awareness by sharing this video on your social media pages or other conservation awareness content. Awesome! Great coral here, hard and soft corals and heaps of different types of damselfish, Sarge Bages. Have a look at this little beauty, Lacticuda, the sea crate, the beautiful snake, awesome black bands, blue coloration. Now there are eight different species which differ from their Hydrophilidae cousins of true sea snakes which are fully aquatic. The sea crate however is semi-aquatic and they come onto land to heat up and digest food and even lay their eggs. Whereas true sea snakes will give birth to live young at sea. So sea crates adapted their own independent evolution from other Australasian elapids. They've got smooth scales and they're quite capable coming out onto the land and even climbing up through the rocks where their sea snake cousins cannot. He still however has that oar-shaped paddle tail Lucky for me, this species is quite placid. However, he is a neurotoxic and he is a front fanged elapid snake. And a bite from sea snakes and crates in general, including land crates, can be potentially fatal. So I don't recommend anybody trying anything you see me do, particularly on this channel. But to get up close and personal and have a really good look at this awesome little snake is great. I've got up to 64 black bands and you can see that beautiful blue ocean coloration there for the camouflage. Now they're specialist eel hunters but they'll also take fish and crabs and what they'll do is they'll dive down anywhere up to 80 meters and they'll stick their heads into the corals. They'll use that forked tongue to pick up the scent particles and his favorite is moray and conga eels. Some species of sea crates have been observed hunting together in packs, working together and actually flushing out prey. Now because they're specialist eel hunters, this is the reason why they need to have such potent venom. And a lot of the marine predators that use venom to catch their prey, like the blue ring octopus, other sea snakes, uh, cone shell and of course box jellyfish, also need to have extremely potent venom to catch their prey and take it out quick. Some opportunistic fish species have been observed following the sea crates and picking off 
the uh, fish and the prey items that they scare out of the coral whilst they're hunting, uh, like the blue trevally, and they can hold their breath for long periods of time, but they need to come up and breathe surface oxygen, just like all other marine reptiles and marine mammals. So the tails are all shaped of the sea crates and the sea snakes, and obviously this is laterally compressed and it's designed to enable them to swim through the water. The sea crates, however, have smooth scales, where their cousins, the true sea snakes, have rough scales or keeled scales, which enable them to hang on to fish and other slippery aquatic prey items. Sea crates are distributed throughout the tropical waters of Southeast Asia, the Coral Triangle, as far south down into Australia and as far north as into the southern islands of Japan and right across to the east of uh, Fiji. This species is the yellow-lipped sea crate and you can see that yellowish lip around the front there. And the females grow to 1.5 metres in length and the males will grow up to one metre, not quite as large as their girlfriends. During April and May, large numbers of sea crates can be gathering on atolls and islets in the mating season. The female releases a mating pheromone and all the males will come and try and mate with her and they can actually form a mating ball in the ocean or on the land. A couple of months later, they lay four to nine eggs up on the land in cracks and crevices where it's dry and safe. Then when the little crates hatch out, they resemble their parents with those stripes and make their way into the ocean. Awesome little snake, let's go and see what else we can find.